Well, natural gas prices are already low, but they could go even lower. Russell Gold joins us now to tell us why this might happen. Russell, um, to, to, two bucks a uh, million yeah. British thermal units, which is about a, a billion cubic feet. Um, that's pretty cheap, but you're saying it could go even lower. Why so? Well, basically because we're running out of storage for it. Um, we usually fill up storage during the summer, and we're so far beyond where we usually are in March that people are looking uh, ahead to October and saying, we're just going to run out of storage. We're going to run out of places to put it, and that's what's driving prices down. And, you know, I know there's been a lot of news today, um, been watching the, uh, the broadcast so far, but, it, but I I'm convinced that what's going on in the natural gas markets might actually have the longest-term impact. Um, because natural gas is so cheap right now that not just has it pushed renewables off or is pushing renewables off the grid. We knew that it's starting to push cheap western coal from the Powder River Basin off the, the power grid. Um, it is actually cheaper than, the, than coal from, um, uh, from Wyoming, Montana, which is practically the cheapest electricity we have. It is really phenomenal what's going on. One thing I think is interesting is that, you know, there is this great, of course, industries are rushing to convert to get uh, their plants or whatever sure. they may have going on natural gas. But I, I, some analysts have talked about the possibility of export. Is that even reasonable to think of it at this point, uh, that we can somehow turn this uh, uh, natural gas uh, glut into something profitable uh, and, and help our uh, export-import situation. Oh, it's not just reasonable, it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly how much, but, but absolutely. Once you build the liquefaction plant, which is what's required to take the gas, chill it down to about negative 260 degrees Fahrenheit, put it basically on a giant thermos bottle, uh, once you do that, the prices in the United States, $2 per million BTUs, if you get it to Japan, it's fetching 14 or 15 dollars per million BTUs, which is incredible arbitrage uh, opportunities. And so we're starting to see some smaller companies like Chenier Energy, which already had the industrial facilities down in Louisiana and Texas to import gas, are just turning around and saying, "Well, we'll build we'll build the facilities to export it now." Uh, probably talking 2015, 2016, but absolutely that does appear like it's going to happen unless the government steps in and says no. We're not going to allow Now, there is something else that natural gas could be used for, making uh, fertilizer. You just um, have to turn it into uh, um, ammonia. Surely that would be very good for farmers. Uh, cheaper fertilizer means you can put more on the plants. Well, absolutely. Um, cheaper plastics, cheaper fertilizer, cheaper power. Um, there is an incredible potential boost to the economy from all this cheap natural gas. Frankly, the only people who really aren't being helped by it are the companies, I'm thinking of Chesapeake, EOG, uh, that, that brought about this abundance of gas. The people who went and found it and put the capital into developing all these new shale plays, they're getting hurt right now because their main product is $2 per million BTUs, and they're all switching as fast as they can to drill for oil and ethanes and anything that will get them a better value than natural gas. But at the same time, we're still seeing gas go up uh, year over year in terms of the amount that's being produced. Okay, well, it, it, you know, it, sound, it sounds so good so far, but I, I guess it's a cynic in me. I'm waiting for the rug to be pulled out good, down the road. to be true. Yeah, right. exactly. What, is there anything on the horizon? Is there environmental concerns? Are there things that might come up uh, that suddenly turn, you know, flip, turn the tables on, on uh, what appears to be pretty fortu fortuitous right now? Well, there are some environmental questions. Frankly, I've been covering this for years. I don't see anything out there that's going to pull the rug out from an environmental point of view. Uh, I think what's going to happen is just going to take several years to rebalance this. And what you'll see, slowly supply will drop off and demand will pick up. You talk about steel plants that are being built. Uh, new um, ethane crackers uh, up near Pittsburgh, Shell's building one. Lots of new demand for this natural gas will come onto line. As coal gets displaced for power generation with natural gas, um, that picks up demand. So eventually it does balance. You're not going to see $2 forever. But this summer, those changes won't happen quickly enough. This summer, we could actually go not just below $2, uh, but we could go down and stay down there. And frankly, that would be the last time that happened was 1999. We might go back even to 1992 pricing. <coughs> and this is a real historic event we're seeing unfold. Wow. Well, I feel less bad about leaving the heating on uh, <laughs> uh, one, one, one day last week. Thank what, you. For what heating? It's uh, been such a mild winter which has contributed to it. <coughs> Well, that, 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 that certainly uh, makes me feel better, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Russell Gold of the Wall Street Journal.